Because they, they, yeah, Shawburn Falls. Because I saw you went to the toy museum. Yeah. Oh, Shawburn Falls. So the opening uh, session <laughs> for uh, a regular meeting, 635. And the first item on our agenda is public input. Uh, is there any public input? It's not a, on our agenda. Hearing none, we'll keep going. There's no student report. Gonna continue the business here. The next item is the MSB SSBC update. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. So just a few things to report to you tonight. Excuse my voice. Um, you might recall that there was a request made to um, examine the surface of the tennis courts, the new tennis courts at the middle high school. Um, and upon that review, it was determined that there was a need to, um, to resurface three of the six courts. It would actually be the three courts that would be closest to the central office. Um, that, that work has been completed. It's been reviewed. I think they did a nice job. Um, yeah, looks good. It's, I'm, of, I'm of the opinion that that's been signed off on and, and, and um, the work has been, has been completed. Um, so it's, it's, it's no secret, it's been a warm, dry summer. Um, there were a number of trees and uh, plantings around the campus that um, needed to be replaced um, from last fall's planting season. That, that work in phase one has been completed. Unfortunately, the weather is not cooperating. I'm, I'm of the opinion that there's probably going to be uh, a need to go back and look at phase one's work um, and address some of the what has really been an unfortunate um, loss, I think, of, of a number of plantings, but um, the work is continuing with our project manager to examine and the landscape architect to examine the needs. Um, I do want to remind the committee and, and probably for the community's benefit that none of the plantings, none of the landscaping has been accepted by the Secondary School Building Committee and until such time as that happens, there is a, a one-year warranty period. So um, the work that had been done to date um, to do the replacements was good, and I was encouraged by that, but the weather has just been so so warm and dry that my fear is that we're going to lose um, lose more, and uh, there is gonna be a need for some additional replacements, so. The replacements don't look happy. No, no. no. It's gonna, again, the other thing, and John said it, that there's uh, no acceptance of the landscaping, but the other thing I wanna remind people is we've withheld a considerable amount of money, yes. so, so they haven't been paid in full, they won't be paid in full until we accept it, um, and I think that, um, in, in the fall, they're going to have to come back and make up, do a lot of replacements. I think so. Yeah. The the I'm going to call it the swing gate, the the gate that was installed at um, at Dodge Road to prevent regular access um, to the main drive to the middle high school. The installation of the get, that gate has been completed. I'm working now with Wayne Hardica to have um, a reflective tape <clears throat> installed on that, so just as, a, as kind of an additional safety measure. And also we will be uh, looking at having some sort of a lock box installed on that with an emergency um, access uh, key um, for public safety personnel. Who the keeps the itself. key? Them, public safety? The key will be in the box. Oh, okay. So there'll be a code I get to get it, in this it. lock box and, right. and within that is the key. All right. So only anybody with the code would be able to access that. So a number of paving repairs have been completed. Um, there, we had some rain today um, that will you know, serve to dictate whether or not those repairs were successful. There was a repair made outside the central office, one down near the entrance to the gymnasium, kind of some smaller repairs. There's a need to, to come back. And um, some of the repairs altered the striping on the, on the surface. So if there's a parking space, for example, and, and I've been told that those will be, um, those stripings will be addressed. And I've just, I just kind of threw on a catch-all in your report that all punch list items, um, they're, they're working to continue to, re to address those and with the help of um, Doran Whittier, um, um, back punching through our project manager continues to um, evaluate whether or not um, those, those punch list items have been addressed properly. Cliff, question? question? Yes, sir. John, I don't know if you have any um, additional info on this, but there are a couple issues brought up back um, a few weeks ago about the soil consistency yes. that they put on the slope and whether that was the right and there was going to be further testing and also the other thing was the um issue with drains and not passing what was the test the yep there's a there's a camera test yeah for, so i do have i do have a, some information on both of those items as recent as today my conversation with pma about the soil for the field areas down below is it's it's an issue quote unquote in dispute Okay. okay, so and that's only from my understanding. That's on the slope, right? It's on the outside the fields, or is it all the all the soil? 
It's not all of the soil, right. but it's definitely the slope and surrounding areas. Exactly. Of the field, right. as I understand. Slope and the surrounding areas. Right. That's what I thought too. Yeah. Okay. So th th that I'm using, I'm using pri uh, PMA's terminology. It's an issue, an item in dispute. Okay. And I want to be clear. It's not. I'm not talking about chemicals or anything in the soil. No, no, I'm no. talking about it's supposed to be a certain I'll consistency. I'll say the grade. The exactly. grade or the compaction, compaction of it or whatever. Stuff. That's the issue, not no chemicals or anything like that. I just want to be clear. And I'm sorry, what was the second one? Um, the drainage. Oh, the drainage, yes. So some testing was conducted by, I think it's niche engineering, and there were still a number of failures. Okay. So that has not been an accepted item. Okay. And that's, both pieces of information are very recent. And again, just to be clear, these aren't accepted, so. Correct. They've got to be fixed before we accept them. That's, that's correct. Okay. Continue to be sort of punch list items. Exactly. Right. Right. Okay. Anything further on that? Uh, new business. We have uh, a, um, a memo from the town administrator regarding t October town meeting warrant and the deadlines for submitting town meeting items uh, for the warrant are, is August 15th. And since we don't have a meeting before then, I guess we're... I'm, I'm not, I don't think they're don't, aware of anything that I don't, needs to be, but I, we I don't, don't have, have the agenda just for your consideration. I mean, I, I do <clears> know <throat> that the Athletic Facilities Committee is going to be talking about the um, restrooms right at the Correct. turf field, but that won't be on the October That's right, that money was appropriated for June. Right, we have 50,000 to do the engineering and the planning work, but mm -hmm. that, we won't be asking for money to do the project until, until, until next June. year. Correct. Yeah. I think at the last selectman's meeting, there was some discussion about the possibility of requesting funds for the, uh, potentially the athletic. Right, I'm gonna bring that, deals. yeah. Bring that up later, yeah. yeah. Okay. We're, we're not. Yeah. No, it's not us. So I guess we don't have anything further on that. Um, there's a resolution there uh, 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 that we're looking to uh, have some discussion about on resolution of lifting the cap on Commonwealth charter schools. Anybody have any um, uh, thoughts on that before we yeah, I, consider it? I'm not, a, um, I'm not opposed to charter schools just for the sake of being opposed to charter schools. I'm opposed to them for a couple of reasons. I don't think they fairly share the burden of educating all students as public schools do, which gives them an advantage. And I also think the funding mechanism is, is just not right. Um, in fact, this year, and I don't know if the Senate or the House overrode this, but this year in uh, mid-June, uh, Save Our Public School, Schools released, uh, put out a press release stating that the, um, the FY17 budget um, seriously underfunds charter school reimbursements to local districts, costing them 57 million next year. Uh, this loss comes in addition to the over 400 million that will be lost to charter will be lost to charter schools even with full reimbursement. The issue is for every child that goes out of the district, Correct. we lose what is it five thousand? Five thousand dollars. Now we we don't have fortunately yeah. for North Reading we don't have this issue. Correct. But right. a lot of urban districts have this issue <clears throat> and and some suburban districts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the governor put in place a new reimbursement policy recently. But still, it does not, what people don't understand is, people think, well, if 10 kids leave a district, you're losing 50,000. Well, 10 kids leave, you can get rid of a teacher. You know, you, know, you can't, because it might be 10 kids in 10 different grades. Right, right. So you're still paying 50 to 60 to 80,000 for a teacher, and you're getting nothing. You're losing, in three years, you stop getting any reimbursement. So. I'm going to support this uh, resolution against lifting the cap on Commonwealth charter schools, cap on Commonwealth charter schools, mainly because of the funding and because I do not feel charter schools um, fairly share the burden of educating all students. Is there any other comments about it? Gary? No, nope, I think no, I'll hit the okay. highlights. And I, I just don't think that when you're giving up $5,000, it manifests itself into a reduction in your budget until you hit a certain number of students right. and even then it, it may not happen mm -hmm. right. so um mm -hmm. and i have a, a, a different uh, thought on this from it come from i have that thought but then i also have another thought that when you take the child out the child who is um and is has a um uh, an initiative taken by a parent 
to take that child from the school that they've been in to a better place. That is a child that's valuable to be in the public school because that's then a parent that's contributing in some way to the, in, the environment, enriching the environment. And the child's an example school. set are also for being and, in your public schools. And so you're, each one of those special kids that gets promoted into a charter school by a parent that's got enough initiative to get up and submit an application, to get them in the lottery or whatever it is to get there. They're taking that valuable uh, resource out of the public school and you're diminishing the public school by that amount. Yep. And it's a, I, I, I think that it's an inappropriate thing to do. I want to add that, I mean, there's some, on charter schools all together. There's some amazing charter schools. There's some amazing performances at some of these schools, especially when if you, you take the cream oh, of the, the crop. Right, right, it's the there's cream of the crop. Right. When you take the cream of the crop and all of the, the kids who have yeah. parental support, especially in the inner city schools, when you take those kids out and put them out on their own, they do better. Well, it's not only going to elevate the, the charter school, it's going to devalue right. the school that's that they exactly left. exactly right. I mean, so that's the problem. And, and to me, that's, that's a, a wrong to society in general. I suppose that those kids go out and they add to society later on, but there's a whole bunch of kids at the regular school that didn't get the benefit of contact with those kids that have the the extra advantage or the extra hoop spot to be able to uh, improve the public school. This is on the ballot in November, and it's got a right. lot of money behind it to, <clears throat> to, to pass right. it. So it's going to be a difficult, um, you know, difficult item to defeat. But it, do we have a motion on this? I'll make a motion to approve the resolution against lifting the cap on Commonwealth Charter Schools. A second. Could I just ask a clarifying question? On it. Inherent in that is to send to the three people yes, that were in your notes? Yes. Senator Tarr. Uh, Ta, Senator Tarr. Senator Jones. Senator and the governor. And the, governor. Yeah. Yeah. the governor supports the lifting. Anything? I want to maybe include that in the motion just so it's more Yeah, OK. And, and <coughs> so I, I propose, uh, yeah, propose a motion supporting the resolution against lifting the cap on Commonwealth Charter Schools and to send such support to Representative Brad Jones, Senator Bruce Tara, and Governor Charlie Baker. Thank you. And the, and the second goes along with that? Yes. Anything further? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Unanimous. The next uh, item on our agenda is an amendment to the collaborative agreement with the North Shore Education Consortium. I want to discuss that a little so bit. So I can, uh, and I'm sorry, in the, in the printout, I don't think um, there's reference to a highlighted sentence. The, the second paragraph of the letter, which is all in italics, it's the last sentence, non-member tuition and fee differential should not exceed 10%. The, the, there's no action to be taken by the committee tonight. I'm, I'm just bringing this to you to let you know that you might recall I brought this to you back in March and, and asked as one of the member districts for the North Shore Education Consortium to, um, to consider the recommendation um, to add that sentence into the Articles of Agreement. And so you did that, and we were one of the, I, th I think it was a unanimous um, uh, vote, if I recall, um, among the member districts as well. It was here and as well as at the member district. So I really just wanted to alert you to the fact that that um, had gone um, to Commissioner Chester and that he has adopted the um, the amendment to the Articles of Agreement. And his letter is attached to the letter that I uh, put in your packet from the director of, um, of the consortium. So it's, it's more just of an FYI for you. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, and the next item, uh, minutes of uh, June 27, open session. Move to approve, as written. Second. Any further comment? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Unanimous. Um, is a budget update, Mr. Conley? Yes, thank you very much. So this evening, um, I'm pleased to report the final FY16 budget update of the fiscal year. So we've been certainly very busy um, in the business office 
uh, paying all final invoices and um, you know closing out the fiscal year and in your packet this evening was the typical monthly budget report broken out by expenses and payroll as well as the final report that gets sent to the town which indicates the amounts expended and um, carried you know any amounts that's going to be carried forward for remaining invoices coming to the district after June 30th and this is broken out by major expenditure category as reflected in the town meeting warrant uh, books each each year so I'm happy to report that we had a very smooth closeout of fiscal year 2016 as projected we had some available funds remaining in some salary accounts as well as in some special education tuition accounts and in some cases some of the utility accounts um, all which helped allow for us to prepay the special education tuitions um, that we had forecasted during the FY17 budget season. We were able to exceed the $100,000 amount forecasted during the budget season um, as we had hoped we would be able to do. Um, based on our conversations during the fiscal year 2017, we felt this was a necessary and a um, advantageous course of action to provide that level of flexibility to address any unforeseen costs uh, that may arise in fiscal 17. Uh, further, we were able to, as we've done in the past, uh, use available funds from these areas to pay May and in some cases June regular transportation and athletic invoices. Um, taking this course of action allows us to meet the FY17 budgeted offsets that we had planned for and forecasted during the FY17 uh, budget development process. So that's something that we've done regularly and we were able to do that again this year. So I'm happy to report that we kind of met our targets and you know, fiscal 17 budgeted offsets should be able to be met. Um, we were also able to complete the first phase of the necessary uh, new math curriculum materials uh, that we had talked about back when Dr. Daly had presented um, both the elementary, middle school, and high school uh, math curriculum adoption materials. So we had uh, set aside some funds to do that and we were able to make those purchases and those materials have been received as well. Um, due to the short month and um, year-end activities and you know, senior graduations and final exams, um, unfortunately the food service program closed out the month of Ju June with a net loss of a little over $8,600. Um, we were ex expecting a loss that's a little bit higher than we had forecasted or budgeted. Um, but the good news is that the total net loss for the year was well, uh, you know, less uh, th than what we had budgeted as a for a loss. It was $16,241.76. This is significantly uh, improved from last year's net loss of $40,779. And again, better than we had forecasted at the start of the fiscal year, we, we had forecasted a loss of $23,948.11. So I think overall it was a very good, good year for the food service program at each level. Certainly the middle school and the, the new middle school kitchen had a lot to do with that. Those sales were up on average 29-30% each month and I think with the um, you know the full breakfast program that we plan to implement next school year at the secondary level I think that this success can certainly continue and we hope that these numbers will continue to decline each year in terms of the net loss and we're again we're working towards a break-even program so I think overall it was a very very good year a lot of positive things happened um, on the payroll side of things, uh, again, the majority of expenses are, have remained within budget ranges, as you can see on, by, by the report. Um, we did, as been the case in the past, we did incur some higher than anticipated substitute costs over this final quarter of the school year. This is mainly due to the need to appoint long-term substitutes to fill extended leave of absences. That does happen. It's happened over the last couple of years, and we continue to see that trend. Um, the differential budget, again, which is the budget that pays um, those staff members that are earning additional credits for additional graduation work, as well as some uh, you know, stipend work um, that's a lot of it's contractual, um, is reflecting a small deficit, which I think is mainly contributed to 
the cost for the mentor program was slightly higher than we anticipated during the budget season um, in fiscal 2016. Uh, but overall, I th I'm very pleased with how fiscal year 2016 closed out, and I think we once again had a very solid, uh, you know, closeout of the fiscal year. We were able to, because of the conservative approach that we took throughout the school year, um, we were able to do a lot of, uh, you know, things at the end of this this school year that I think, sh you know, set us up to be in, you know, solid financial standing as we approach fiscal year 2017. Um, with that, I'll open it up to any questions. Does this mean that we're giving back a thousand three hundred twenty-nine? That's dollars? correct. Yeah, that's correct. Right. I, I, I question serious. Michael's performance on that. Um, yeah. Thousand three hundred twenty-nine dollars. <laughs> so again, the smallest amount we've given back in it is, really the last several years. Can we make it, it even smaller? Or? It is. So you have to. I, know. I hate to give back. We anticipated a comment about that. Yeah. yeah. So it has. That's been around ten thousand dollars <coughs> the last five years. If you look. That's back. ten thousand dollars. You know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. right. So Michael, I have yeah. a question. So. I know that prepaying special ed tuitions is now like baked into the budget every year, and if we Correct. don't do it, mm -hmm. we're going to be hurt the following year. Mm -hmm. Correct. Well, my question is this: say, say that we come to the end of the year and we have 170 thousand, and you say, "Okay, I'm going to prepay special ed tuitions with this money." Mm -hmm. Could we ever look at that and say, "I'm going to pay 120 thousand"? prepay 120000 and I'm going to hire another teacher for X school, or is there any way we can do that? You know, you know uh, what I'm saying? I do John? know what you're saying, yeah. Because, yeah. because do we have, in, in other words, do, do we have to, is there some magic number that you look for to prepay tuitions that we're going to have to prepay in order to make sure next year's budget um. stays balanced, or do you pay more sometimes than we might have to, and instead we could use that money to hire a teacher or two. Yeah, so we've kind of fallen into a trend for the last number of years where we're in the budget development process and it's, it's getting difficult, it's getting challenging. And we've tried to take a conservative approach during the current fiscal year and we've begun to budget um, a, a, you know, a forecast or a plan to offset the budget by prepaying tuitions, which is what the law enables us to do. So we've fallen into that trend of around $100,000 a year. And then once we're kind of in that, it's difficult to, to get out of that because it's, then you have to kind of add $100,000 into that you know, sub subsequent budget year to, to make up to not, to not continue to do that each year. So you said we prepaid more than 100. So that's, we prepaid more than That's 100. where I'm getting to. So if it was 150, couldn't we instead take that 50,000 and hire a teacher for so the high school? You can't, yeah. so a couple things, you can't use current you know, uh, fiscal year funds to fund something that's so there's no way to move that forward year. into the next fiscal year no but what you you know what you can ther theoretically do the law allows you to prepay tuitions so you can Use you know that. prepay more than that hundred thousand dollars which we have done and then vote a budget amendment the following year because you now have prepaid 150 theoretically there should be fifty thousand dollars available right so that could be um, you know a school committee has line item authority right you could have voted an amendment to, for a transfer. I think the answer is you're not changing the available funds that you have. Yeah. So that's uh, going to have to come from yeah. someplace. So yeah. if you're, if you're going to hire the no, teacher, I, those funds are going to be lost. Money is fungible. Well, yeah, but I, what I didn't realize, so what I was saying is that you could hire the teacher in the, the current saying. fiscal year, in June. Yeah. And, yeah. and but, but you're saying, but the 50,000 doesn't carry over to next year for their salary. No, there's only certain that's, things. That's what I was yeah, asking. There are only certain things you're allowed to. Right. Right. And that number is a real actual carryover that carries over into the next first, that 86, four, so 466. So that 86,466, those are all from mainly the, a lot of that's utility invoices, right. insurance invoices. Oh, okay, so those have to be that we, hadn't, that we hadn't received the bill yet by on June 30th. Okay. So you so, can carry over money for things like that. So we do a purchase order. The purchase order carries over. Yeah, well, I'm assigned but it has to be order. spent for what you've assigned that purchase right. order okay. for. Right. In the anticipation now, of receiving them. All those invoices come in during the month of July. We have until July 31st to close it out. I would say that balance right now is about $1,000. Yeah. Okay. On June 30th, it was 86000 right. But, you, but you don't do a purchase order for a teacher up. and Correct. say, Correct. Right. okay, now the teacher's hired. Now we can take yeah, the money. You can't spend okay. current uh, fiscal year you, funds you for services taken, for next year. The only could, thing you're allowed to do is the special education yeah. piece. But you could have yeah. taken the prepaid money and used that to say. hire a teacher. So if you pay, you're allowed to prepay up to three months of tuition. Yeah. So you could theoretically right. 
prepay greater than what you forecast. You take that out of the special ed tuition budget to and hire a teacher. Right. 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 Is that something that we can look at, John? I don't know what the amount of money is. But is it's, there, it doesn't no, but what I'm saying is, I'm, what I'm saying is, if, if yeah. we prepaid a lot more, can we at least look at that? I'm not saying there's yeah. enough money there. No, no, to hire it's just a teacher. The, if you prepaid a lot more, that money's coming from someplace. somewhere else. That's right. Exactly. It's coming from somewhere else. No, but it's coming from this year. This right. year, from right. past year. Right. So then. So that means it could be extra money in the. At the end of the year, in the budget. Theoretically, that's at the end of the year, but then you'd have to carry that forward to the next year, right? Yeah, right. Pay for it the next. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, that's kind of what we've done. That's the trend we've kind of been on. But once we're in the July, once we're in the new fiscal year, if we wanted to, and there was, Michael was confident that there's enough money in the special, there's more than enough money in the special ed budget, which you're never confident about special ed tuitions, you could hire a teacher. Of course. Yeah, that, that's all right. I'm saying. If yeah. we prepaid a lot more right. than we expected right. could, yeah. to that, prepay, yeah. that's and all. One I'm of the things say. that we've done is we've always tried to, if the funds are available. Unfortunately, the last couple of years, we've had a little bit more than that hundred thousand to put towards that. Is because you know it's so it's such a volatile line. Right. I know there's always like new, there's new kids being and added to the system. Yeah. That there is no right. You know, we haven't been able to fund a stabilization account. Um, on the town side right. that could be exist for these types of uh, situations. We've tried to um, you know, mitigate the situation by not having to go back for the town and you know, the, the next fiscal year by prepaying is. You know, but the main more. thing I was looking for can't be done. I thought you could carry over 50,000 or 60,000 no. over the next year and hire a teacher Absolutely. with that money. So that's, that's yeah, all. Yeah. And in reality, what might happen some year is we might have to use all of that. Mm -hmm. and, in a lot of cases. And go have. right down to zero. I know the very first year, I, again, that's exactly what yeah. occurred. Is we, we pre, fortunately we prepaid a lot more than 100,000, around two, you know, 200 or so, mm -hmm. and we very quickly spent that by the end of the summer. There, we there was a risk. Come in. There was a risk this year. Right. There, yeah, there is. There, is. This, there was a potential this year. So, Michael, what did we prepay? So we prepaid um, about 230,000 tuition. Yeah. So in tuitions. The tuition. Um, but again, we, you know, they. There were things that arose, I'll just refresh your memory, during that budget process that we didn't work into the budget um, because of the, it was so far along in the, the development process that we had said we were conservative and froze the, the budget early on and we had, right. with the goal of exceeding that $100,000 because I think in a lot of ways I'm going to be working with um, you know, the special education office this summer. I think a good, a large portion might, is of that amount that we exceeded will be need to be encumbered and spent by next fall. Right. Um, I would just add, I want to remind, we, we instituted essentially a budget freeze in October in anticipation of some, some challenges correct. we were going to face in the spring. Correct. So it was a, when Michael refers to a conservative spending practice, that's, that's what it is. Right. It was very early in the fiscal school year. School starts in September and you have a budget freeze in October. School, the budget starts on July 1, school starts in September. We had a, a I would say, a soft freeze in mid-October. Correct. And that's yeah. not untypical here unfortunately so I would say that's just general practice I, I, I wouldn't think, say that that's a just a freeze <laughs> and if I could mr. chairman I just the, the, you know I, I as you all know I work very closely with Michael we're down in that space together with with um, the other central office administrators and staff and the, the closeout process is a significant undertaking and I want to thank Michael publicly for in his staff he's got a very good working relationship with um, finance director on the town side, Liz Paveo, who works very well with him, um, to bring this to closure. And I, I thank you oh, for it, Michael. It's you. a significant undertaking. Good job, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Anything further on that? No. All right. We we'll move on to bids and donations. We have a donation of $2,500 from Fit Revolution to support physical education programs in the district's five schools. Do I have a motion? Make a motion that the school committee votes to accept with gratitude a $2,500 donation from Fit Revolution on behalf of the proceeds raised from this year's Hornet Hustle Road Race to benefit each school's physical education program. Second. Any further comment? We appreciate it. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Michelle. All, all opposed? No, of course. Unanimous. Um, go on to subcommittee updates. We missed something somewhere, didn't we? I don't think so. Okay. No, there's no staffing report. Not yet. 
Jerry, you got the no I got the notes on. I left them in the car, actually. Uh, we had a, a long agenda on the athletics of <coughs> committee meeting, but we ran through it um, very quickly. Um, we talked about uh, the new fields. We talked about, and I think uh, Mr. Bernard is going to look into um, bringing electrical power source out to the different areas of the softball field. I actually right. had, I, I had a meeting today with an electrician um, mm -hmm. to get a price on that and also the, uh, the I'm going to call it the so-called timer device at the tennis courts. So okay. I'm expecting quotes on those. That's on the timer that for the lights, right? Correct. And that was also one of our issues we discussed. Um, Mr. Connolly made a brief presentation on the final uh, department financial report. We're in good shape. We have a, had a little bit more money in the revolving. revolving account than we expected. Um, not, not a lot, but... Mm -hmm. Enough of a balance so we don't drain it out completely. Sixteen to nineteen thousand, something like that. Or was it sixteen thousand? So it was yeah. After the um, commitment to the fields, right. <coughs> nineteen thousand. Nineteen thousand. Um, we talked again. I believe we've gone forward and we will be having. A, um, we haven't voted on it officially, but Haverhill High School and North Reading High School, I think, have pretty much agreed for a cooperative uh, co-op ski team. I think we're close. Um, and that will come before the school committee to approve at some right. point. Um, we touched on, I'll, I'll, I'll give a little more when I give a athletic facilities committee update because we did have a meeting before a couple of weeks ago. We touched on athletic facilities, the laboratory facilities, the turf field. Um, we actually had some uh, communication with Mr. Gilberto, the town administrator, and he basically has said he's looking toward the athletic facilities committee to um, carry the ball carry the ball on that right we have a little bit of information on that from a, it was part of that same meeting I had with Michael Gilbert okay. on last Thursday with the RFQ do you Correct. want to speak about so that? Um, given that <coughs> at town meeting obviously we have the money set aside to do the design of that of that project uh, Michael Gilberto is going to be working on an RFQ as part of under the design procurement laws with the um, you know chapter you know 30 39 M to um, procure a qualified designer to begin work um, oh, good. For the, good on the design excellent so he's something that he's working on so we had hoped he was going to take that but initially it looked like it was going to fall to the athletic facility. well I think it is event I think eventually the next phase once of we it get will, right he yeah. was willing to do this first excellent. art and when right. he when we met um, the three of us Michael Gilberto mm -hmm. Michael Connolly and I on last Thursday it was it, we kind of followed up on the request that the athletic subcommittee had of him to come into our next right. meeting on August 23rd I think it is yeah. so in the end we decided that rather than wait till that meeting um, to talk about what we just talked with you about we, we decided that you yeah. know if he, and he was willing to pursue that now so that we wouldn't lose the time in between Good. the day we were speaking to him on August 23rd so now will we get to look at that because <laughs> our goal is we want all, we options. want all options Correct. considered all options. right I, I made that I expressed that to him I okay. told him that there was a vote you know kind of a soft vote right. of the committee at the meeting that we had the yes. athletic subcommittee that we were in favor of exploring the full option with and by all options just so everybody understands that's a new new uh, restroom facilities only new restroom facilities and a Session. concession stand add-on right add -on. part of the building or using the existing storage space in the team yeah. room for restrooms and building a building for storage and uh, concessions right so those are the options so I expressed at. to mr. Gilberto on Thursday that I felt it was the athletic subcommittee's desire that the concession stand piece was was important so okay. he's yeah. operating under that information um, a couple of things we talked about were the irrigation at um, Cary Park there are still some issues mr. Brown do you have an update on I that? I do that work is supposed to that we have some heads sprinkler heads that are damaged from whatever reason mm -hmm. um, and there's the repair work is supposed to be done tomorrow okay the 26th of August uh, we discussed the fitness center summer use program was not implemented yeah, there just wasn't the level of student interest that would have made it um, sustainable. So we may consider it next year, look at the price. I think I will. I think I'd like to try it another year. I'd like okay. to at least offer that to middle and high school students um, and mm -hmm. maybe have to look at what the fee. We, we had assessed a, a $100 fee for right. about a seven to eight week period. Right. Um, and that was primarily to cover supervision, right? It yes. was. Yeah, yeah so it was. So I think I would, you know, it would mean more students, but I think, I think I'd, like to, I'd like to at least give it another good effort for next summer. I thought it was a good idea. A lot of the teams of football in particular, I think, are working yeah. on a different facility. Yeah. And, you know, the parents are willing to pay some significant money for these kids to go to these facilities, which is fine. You know, it's good. And then finally, we talked about the tennis courts, lighting controls, and the signage, right. which we're not going to put the signage up until we settle the whole lighting. I think once we know what the plan is for the lighting and if we're able to afford to do something that will allow 
a person that wants to go out and play tennis, it starts to get dark, they could adjust, you know, for some lighting. They would always automatically shut off at whatever time we designate. Right. We're kind of talking about a 9.30 p.m. Right. Um, but if we're able to do something like that, um, then I think the signs that we put on the courts will need to reflect whatever that lighting plan we're is. Getting great uses on those courts. I don't think I drive by you know, it's amazing. in the evening and don't the see somebody it's, there. There's a lot of use. Always people. Yeah, playing. it's really nice. And the to repair see. job they did looks yeah, good. It does. I don't look know good. if our project managers looked at it or not, but um, project manager looked at it. Architect, I do not know. Yeah, but it looks pretty good. So, so Jerry, I, I think that's about it, right? Uh, yeah, I think that was it. Um, Oh, the hockey. Oh, right. The girls hockey. The girls hockey, it's looking like we're probably going to stay with the uh, Peabody. Right. The Linfield partnership. Peabody, right. With, uh, right. It didn't look Peabody like for at least another year. We were trying to move the team. We were looking at moving the team, yeah. but it looks right. like for at least one more year we're going to stay with that. That's right. Yeah. So, and Cliff, if I could, I give it, um, we also had an athletic facilities um, committee meeting on July 20, no, was it July 20? I forget exactly when it was. I got the minutes. But. Uh, well, July 12th. July 12th. July 26th, that's, yeah. that's in the future. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so you know, as we've discussed before, the bids, the two bids we got in far exceeded the amount of money we've collected. Um, we have scheduled another meeting on August 9th, and in the meantime, I've communicated to all the members of the committee, plus the youth leagues and other groups that are supporting us financially uh, to date, that we are going to go back out to bid on the project. Mr. Connolly already has that in process. Mm -hmm. Um, we're actually going to bid the irrigation system with an alternate addition of the sod. Right. So that means everybody who bids on it has to bid the irrigation system. And if they also want to bid the sod project part of it, they can. Our goal is we're going to get this done. It may, it may not be 100% by the fall. We're going to get the irrigation in by the fall. We have enough money for the irrigation yep. for mm -hmm. sure. Um, we've also begun some outreach for financing. We have a couple, I, I know I watched the Selectman's meeting last week. Selectman Prisco raised the possibility of, of free cash uh, once the free cash is certified in, I believe, early September. Um, and That'll take a town meeting vote, obviously. Right, and, in October, on yeah. October 17th. None of the committee members said outright no to that. I'm, I'm not thinking that they're going to give us the entire 50000 no. but I, I, I know that Mr. Prisco is looking at some significant chunk of that money. There's also another, um, you know, Marty Tilton, the Director of Parks and Recreations, is working with um, the Hall of, uh, Hall of Fame Committee. There could be another significant chunk of money coming there. And we also uh, had a letter go, go out on Friday to a number of businesses in town uh, looking for donations. donations yeah. And uh, hopefully we'll see something there. Mm -hmm. So I'm 100% confident that by the spring, or this project will be done. I mean, our goal would be to have the irrigation and the sod done September, October, by mid-October, right. I would think. That's our goal. That's our goal. Right. And I think if we do that, I think the fields may be usable in the uh, spring. Right. We're hoping for lower bids to come in. Um, one of the things is when we bid this last time, it was kind of a rush, and most of the companies, their schedules were book solid, and they were basically fitting us in to do the job is, is one of the things we heard from them. Um, Interestingly enough, we also heard from a couple of other vendors after the bidding process mm -hmm. saying, oh, I could have done this for X amount of money. Right? Well, we're hoping they bid, they bid this, this time, time around. They bid yeah. the next time. If they can really do it for X amount of money, then come on into yeah. the party because, uh, yeah. you know. The Yale Associates, um, Associate Peter Spanos, he mentioned to me as early as this morning that he's getting some interest. He seems to think some might be you know, potentially some more interest. That would be there. great. Is this, that going to be advertised timing. this Wednesday, Mike, or is it going to be next week? It's going to be advertised on uh, next Wednesday. Okay. Um, on August 3rd. Right. And then it will be in the transcript again on August 4th, next Thursday. It's scheduled. We're going to do a three-week time frame. It's going to open on August 25th. It's a Thursday. Okay. Um, that gives us plenty of time. Yeah. And yeah. thanks to Mel's good work, he communicated very well with all of the leagues and all the people who have donated and money. They're all, they were on board. Yeah. They're staying on board despite the fact that we didn't, weren't able to accept the bids. Heard so. from no, no, no league, and the biggest contributor is 100%, and, and this is a huge contributor, is That's 100%. Um, the soccer, North Reading Youth Soccer, is 100% behind us. They want it done right because they know that if it's not done right, the field will become unusable right. very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so. 
it's moving ahead. It's slower than we expected. We're not going to be able to use it this fall. I know that causes headaches for Dave Johnson because it's a scheduling. I don't think we would have been able to use it this fall. Anyway I don't either. Yet. Because the way the weather's so, been, right. I don't the weather, think right. we could have done it. Right. We survived last year. Yeah. yeah, we will. We survived last year, and I think we actually may have benefited from the delay right. yeah. been given this summer. The one other thing about those fields, and, and you know, this is, this is going to be hopefully a community-wide effort where it's with the different youth groups, et cetera, there's a lot of equipment that we're going to need for those fields. There's everything from goal posts to soccer goals to field hockey goals leaches to for bleachers for the softball field, field to scoreboards. Scoreboard, you know, that, gauges, none of that stuff. A lot of you stuff. Know, when, we, when we cut stuff out of the project, we weren't going to come back in when we had to meet a budget for the school project. We weren't going to come back in and say, let's add a scoreboard. Let's add, right. because we had a cut in order, to, in order to meet the budget. But these are things we can do gradually. Right. So, so down the road, you know, we'll be looking at ways to, to raise funds for those issues. But the key thing is to get the irrigation in and get the sod down. That's it. Um, Go ahead. Um, Mr. Bernard and I met with Representative Norcam the other day. That's yes. Right. And um, we had uh, made a proposal for the conservatives. <laughs> to them that they capitalize the infrastructure and the cameras necessary for the Performing Arts Center, as well as a camera for the gymnasium. gymnasium. <clears throat> so we made the proposal to them, um, and uh, I guess ultimately their position was that it's not on their, their list of priorities. Uh, they don't have the budget right now to um, be able to finance something like that. that um, they expected us to find alternative sources of funding that they may be able to supplement if we were able to find the alternative sources. They're dead set against putting a camera in the gym. They don't think it serves any purpose. Uh, but they are in support of, you know, a project in the Performing mm -hmm. Arts Center, but they don't have the funding right now. So what I'd like to do, I talked to John about it, if the committee accepts it, to just do a written proposal to them just so it's on record, they have it and they can take it into consideration and put us on their list somewhere along the line. That uh, makes sense. Um, because I think it would be a good addition for the particularly performing arts center as well as the gymnasium. Uh, John, why don't you? No, I, I think that, that captures it well, Jerry. I, I do, you know, my hope would be that um, in the spirit of, you know, not only the cooperation, but also I think the benefit that doing so, that project would, would have to the community, um, that, that we'll be able to achieve something. I think you're right. I don't think there was a, a strong interest, or if any interest at all, really, in accommodating the gymnasium. No, but, um, I don't but with the Performing Arts Center, there seems to be, so. Um, they, I, they're required to, to uh, uh, program in the town meeting, selectmen's, selectmen's meeting, school, school committee right. meetings. And obviously, for town meeting, it would make their job a lot easier if they had the infrastructure in there uh, and the cameras in the Performing Arts Center. I also think we could show a lot of um, pro we could produce some programming out of the performing no, arts. No center. question. And I think we could produce a lot more out of the gymnasium. Yeah, so can I ask a question on the yeah. gym? So if they want nothing to do with it. Can is there? A, can we talk to a company that provides cameras to come in there and say, yes, if you put this camera up here, you could broadcast basketball games, volleyball games, etc., and get a cost? Th their position was that that camera would be in a. Effective. My my feeling is that camera pans. But I've seen the them. In other, I've seen them in other gyms. That's where they put them. I agree with you 100. percent They they had this this vision that it does. It was not, a, more of an overhead. It's an overhead camera. camera. It's a camera them. on the wall that I think pans the entire court. Right. So my what question they is, said was we can still broadcast games. It just have to be handheld cameras. So if students wanted to broadcast the games, they could go mm -hmm. get trained, take the equipment from. I Rock understand camps. all that, but yeah. we have the infrastructure in there. If they don't want anything to do with it. Can we talk to, can we get another company in here sure. to, just to look at it sure and say, sure we we can maybe they'll say it's not feasible. Yeah. Yeah. We can put a camera in there and, and is, record it, but we don't broadcast. Yeah. No, no, right, it's not gonna be broadcast so, live. They're all so, gonna be recorded, right? So what we perhaps need to do is look into how we can come up with a broadcast station. Yeah, I'd like to see that. I think, I think based on the program that I see on uh, public television that People might have an interest in watching the volleyball games, the girls' basketball games, the boys' basketball games, the pep rally, the award ceremony, athletic award ceremony that goes on in there. 
Um, what other events? And I would just a add, number of events. You know, there's middle school events now too. There's middle school right. events, which so we that would be good <clears throat> current programming that you could show over and over again, and people would be interested in seeing. And the issue is, I agree with Cliff. It'd be nice if we could find some students, and I know we do because we've, we've got to be aggressive to get the students yeah, that want. We've to got a lot of students that are going to Syracuse right now and doing this type of work. I mean, uh, sports uh, broadcasting, sports Syracuse, journalism. Ithaca, Emerson, Emerson. Yeah, yeah, they're all going there. So I think if they had an opportunity here to do a broadcast of a game, it would be a lot of fun for them, and it would be helpful for them in the future. So yeah, I, I, I'm not exactly sure how you do it, but there's got to be some way. I, think I know just, that uh, people put stuff on yeah, YouTube. There are people. That, you know, put a put a whole game on YouTube. I've seen away teams way. come to North Backers, Reading, yeah. broadcast the game, and show the game on, right. on right. public Masco, television. Masco. Masco. And it looked to me like a pan camera, that there was one camera showing the whole They clock. had a camera in the stands. Yeah. When they, I was at that game. Yeah. When they were and they broadcast it. the game. They did right. a terrible job, we, but right. they broadcast <laughs> we it. Have, we have the infrastructure, I believe, to put the camera there. That's yeah. All I we need too. is a camera right. there. Right. Well, they get it back to the studio. It's not, we, we're not getting through to them. That, it's, not a, it's not a priority for them at right. this point in no. time. So if it's a, it's a camera and then you need the remote control, like they have, the, like you know, Jason up there has a remote control for all these cameras mm -hmm. that are covering mm -hmm. us. Right. So I, I would, you know, I don't know what the process would be. I don't know if we'd have to pay someone to come out and look at that. But if there's, if there's a camera provider that would come out here and say, yes, you can put a camera up there. It's got a wide angle lens on That's it, or whatever, whatever it is. It's an option. It just seemed logical to me as the NARCAM rep to present to them this proposal because that's what they're in the business of would doing. You, right. And Would I you guess like me to explore that and see yeah. if I can. Yeah. I think. Well, I think it's at, it's advantageous for us to even see if it's functioning. Yes. Get a camera in there to even yeah. see if the infrastructure is working. Right. Is <laughs> because my understanding is the infrastructure is they would still have to put the wiring through. Which. Oh, I thought the wiring was. I don't think the wiring. My understanding, John, is the wiring's not in there. I, that, the wiring, I thought the I wiring was. I thought the wiring the wasn't. It's not a big deal. It's set up. Okay. I think it's in. all in there. Is it in there? Yeah. I think it is too. But anyway, but anyway, it was a good meeting. Everybody was cooperative. It's just like I said, we're in a different place than than well, the There's no place. wiring in the. There's no wiring. Correct. In the no forming arts. forming arts center. No. Right. Not. Not, not, would not to. Not. Not remote, for mobile cameras. Not for right. Remote right. cameras. Right. Remote cameras. Right. All right. And again, just not to rehash this, but. Going back during the project, there was discussions with our architect and our project manager with NORCAM about how we were going to approach this. There were miscommunications. The, the project and, and, and its effort to stay on schedule and everything, it just never got done. Yeah, I, I, was, was, the, I, was, the, I was the liaison to NORCAM at that time. I brought Rob and I think John Ferriero in right. three years ago. It was in the old high school right. cafeteria. They presented what they wanted. We thought that's what was being done. It just didn't get done. And it just didn't get done. Yeah. And I don't think it's NARCAM's fault. I no. think that was the fault of, uh, uh, we'll take responsibility, but through our architect yeah. and our project manager, it just didn't get just done. Just didn't get done. Yeah. Well, I'll look into an option. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, if, if, if that's a possibility. Okay. I'd be curious, like Julie said, once to see if it works and yeah. Yeah. if it pans the whole court, because if it does, there's a lot of stuff. You I mean, I think. Well, not only that, like it could be like a media club at the high school. Well, is there a media club? There is. Currently? And, and we actually have started now with the video production module in the right. middle school. Right. So right. I'm optimistic that we are far further along with having students trained to be so able to do that kind of work than I mean, we were even a year ago. Very, very hard to do if you don't have the infrastructure. Exactly. Right? We, had, we now have the infrastructure for having that kind of work. But again, an ASCO came in with a camera, showed the whole game, and broadcast. Right. Just you know, no problem. And they, so, they so that is still that's an option. If we have students willing to do it, yeah. they can go down, and they can sign cameras out. They've got to be which trained. is what not camp suggested. Right, they can that's go down, they can sign a camera out, and they can broadcast. Ga they can the games aren't live, but they can you know film well, the, the, the other record the yeah, games. Record them. The other dispute we have them. with them is they don't think there's any real value in that programming. That's right. that, that's uh -huh. their opinion. I, I disagree. So, if you don't have an interest in sports, it's hard to get exactly. Right. And exactly. Sports, isn't it? I mean, I wouldn't say every game, but if you get a couple games from each team, cool. boys basketball, girls basketball. Well, especially as it gets to the playoff level, right? You know, right. I especially think. when you get to the states. Yeah. Right. All right. Um, we kind of skipped over the SSBC meeting. Oh. I don't think there's much more that I have to offer. No I think there's no we've quorum. covered everything. There wasn't a quorum. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we didn't have a quorum. Oh, yeah, we didn't have a quorum. So we're, we're we didn't have a quorum? Mm -mm. No, yeah, we're really making well, Some people were in Maine. They couldn't make it. They were on vacation. <laughs> I was at the airport. <laughs> I didn't mention any names. Um, you mentioned Maine. But, <laughs> well, it could be other people. Who, you know. 
There aren't any other people in Maine. <laughs> so we really couldn't accomplish it. It set us back, Cliff, quite a bit. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> we would have had the camera. <laughs> but we're in the... Uh, we're in the uh, push list. Right, we're in the home. Well, that'll be the last time I bring up an item we skipped over. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it's fair. To, John gave an update, but I think it's fair to say we're definitely in the home stretch, yeah. and uh, we're going through the punch list. And you know, the biggest thing moving forward is landscaping. Landscaping. And we're trying to reconcile. We've uh, we've worked a lot of kinks out of the HVAC system. That's certainly not perfect yet. Tennis courts have been fixed. Tennis courts have been fixed. Has been training gone on on the. Uh, we landed um, a man on the to, to get the light to work on the flagpole. Right, the, the lights on the flagpole will never work. <laughs> but other so, than that, I promise you, I raised that again. Today. I know, I did. I swear I to God, I, I will not vote another dollar. I do for not it. understand <laughs> what works. the problem is. I don't either. I just, I don't know what to tell you. Work for two days. I, I came here. You don't have to be embarrassed. They should be embarrassed. I just, I don't understand why it's. I'm at the point where, yeah. Because the whole point of having the light is so the flag can stay out there, so we don't have to take it down at night. Anyway. All right. Uh, we've covered all the subcommittees. Now, the meeting dates for future sub subcommittee uh, meetings, uh, NORCAM Board of Directors on July 28th, Finance Planning Team at, on August 9th at 8.15 a.m., the SSBC on August 9th at 5.30 p.m., Athletic Facilities Committee August 9th, at 6.30 p.m. And the policy committee is to be announced. Actually, Mr. Chairman, that uh, at the time I typed the report, I didn't have a confirmed date. The policy subcommittee meeting is gonna be on August 3rd at 9 a.m., correct? I'm getting up early for that one, Jerry. 9 a.m., can you believe it? No, I, I thought I was- There is a 9 a.m. Yeah. I, I honestly set the time thinking of you. You better go to bed. Like I said, you know, nine seems reasonable. I won't go at eight. I'm at two o'clock. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to watch my late night TV that night. <laughs> It's all the subcommittee schedule. Uh, administrative report? Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you, I do, I have it here. So a few things to share, excuse me, a few things to share with you. Um, the first is just, to, you know, I'm, I'm gonna continue to keep it on my administrative report my about the, uh, the little school project, little school roof project, the project remains on schedule. We're expecting a, a large delivery of um, materials on Wednesday. This will really take us to a a pretty significant construction phase, so, uh, but things are going well. I, I, you know, I'll reserve, somewhat reserve judgment, but so far the work, that the, 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 the companies that we're working with, when I say we, Michael Connolly and I, from the project manager to the architect to yeah. the actual roofing company have been extremely diligent and very detailed in their communications with us. We get a daily report on the work, that, a typed daily report on the work that's taken place, identification of any issues and such, so they've been very good. Um, there is a, a meeting on Thursday, just kind of a project update, uh, um, so-called building committee meeting that I'll be attending uh, on Thursday morning. So it's, it's, it's going along well. I do expect that <clears throat> we will be into September with some level of construction going on, but it's, that's not unanticipated. So the Global Child Foreign Language Program, I looked back on my June 20th report. I, I told talked you, to you, remember before I said, I want to put this on Facebook, and I said, how many students do we have? What did on, you say, 35? On June 20th, there were 33. 33. There were 210 Jeez. registered as wow. SNA. Unbelievable. Yeah. So it's really good. Um, I, in fact, right now, I, I jotted down the, um, I think there are, tentative, this is tentative, but there are 19 classes running at the Batchelder School, a combination um, uh, morning and afternoon. Um, 16 at the Hood School, 13 at the Little, and four at the Middle School. Wow. So to say that that was not a worthwhile endeavor, at least based on these numbers, it would be an understatement. Could you, at some point, just break down what language is? The kids I can. Speaking? I have it here. Because it, here's, here's why. Sure. Because I think that this is helpful fodder for us in getting more money in the budget for foreign languages. If you get 210 people willing to spend money for basically an introductory, just, these people want this. They need yeah. this. The this is an unmet this. need. Exactly. It's, it's most, I would say to you, it's, it's Spanish, French, and Chinese. It, it goes three. like that. Spanish is huge. Yep. There's some interest in French, but it's all three. I think I wrote that in my report that all three languages, did I write that? Yeah, Chinese, French, and Spanish. Four classes at the middle school, I'm <clears> impressed <throat> with that. I didn't think we were gonna get Yeah, that. It's, it's good. And again, there's some fluidity to those numbers, but um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's encouraging. 
I think there's about uh, 29 students involved at the, wow. at, the, at the middle school right now. So, That's great. but again, there's some details to be worked out on the on the yeah, enrollments and such. Comment from the audience. One more Is question: um, Are all the different classes that were offered going to be, off going to be offered? Because I think there has to be a minimum number of students. That's correct. That and that's what I mean when I say the numbers are fluid. So she, they're still working out whether or not the minimum number will ju justify whether or not that class runs. And will, if parents sign up for one class or with another one, for example, I mean, yeah. Right. If 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 it offered if it was offered at the time that they could accommodate yeah, them, I, I don't see. Yeah. I I would say those are questions for Diana Hebner. Her her contact. She's kind of the the person spearheading this. But I know that even the reason we were in contact with each other today was. Before she decided to offer an additional section of a particular class, she wanted to make sure that it was okay with me and the principals that we could accommodate. Could we accommodate whatever it was, I think 18 classes at the Batchelder School. Amazing. And before she went to the wait list with Pete, because there's a wait list, believe it or not, she wanted to be able to have that detail to plug people in. So I think that I can confidently say that there's a, a, a high level of accommodation that she's willing to extend to make sure that whatever programs can run, will run. When did you do it? It's too bad. I think the class is over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it was too, if it was toward the end, it was probably because oh, she was waiting to hear from me on whether or not we were amenable to a second section. Just reach out to her. She's very good about personal contact. John, these are all North Reading students, 210. These are all North Reading. Yes. Yeah. Only. Yeah, I think if the charge went through, I would guess that. Oh, I was going to say, was your check cash, but it was a charge. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't hear anything um, in four weeks, call us. Yeah, no, no. I, I would be willing to bet you'll hear from her this week. I think, I think the conversation she had with me today was important to her to decide whether or not she was going to be able to offer the, the variety that she hoped to. I'm extremely pleased with this. I, I wish we could offer it, you know, as part of our curriculum, but I'm glad that you It could be a good precursor to exactly. that, and it could help us in making the argument. Exactly. This is something that the community wants. Well, it's interesting so. because I'm on School Spring a lot for myself looking for positions and I see quite a few elementary middle foreign language, foreign language teachers, <laughs> yeah. teachers so mm. it this is definitely something that we could be yeah. you know set a goal for the mm. oh, it's one of my future. top goals but yeah. I don't know how we're gonna find this will align the goals under education program if it's right. not there yet absolutely okay so I think that's a good sign for global child um, National Night Out, just an informational flyer uh, for you. It's attached to the um, report tonight, so the, the Community Impact Team is hosting this again. Uh, we decided early on this year, you might recall last year we got rained out and there was no rain date set. So with the planning for this year, the Community Impact Team decided it would set a rain date. So it's August 2nd. If, the, if there is a need for a rain date, the event would be held on August 9th. And I it's at 5.30 at Ipswich River Park, and um, I, I attached a, an informational flyer to your packet for you. And then I just put together um, a calendar. I, I think it's fair to say that these dates are all but carved in stone. I don't expect, um, I certainly don't expect changes to uh, the first day of school, that's for sure. But um, the, um, the high school um, freshman orientation is scheduled for August 23rd. We have um, a new educator orientation program, and that's the annual two-day program for um, new staff. That's going to be on August 24th and 25th. The middle school's orientation program, the so-called walkabout day for grades 6, 7, and 8 will be held on August 30th. Just a reminder, we do have a professional development day on September 1st. That's before the Labor Day weekend. That's for staff only. It's a Thursday. Um, then there would be the long weekend of Friday through uh, Monday. <clears throat> and then we will have our traditional um, opening day uh, for faculty and staff in the Performing Arts Center here on September 6th at 8.30, kind of the welcome at uh, kind of the informal portion of the program beginning at 8.30 and we'll start in the Performing Arts Center about 9 o'clock and that's usually when um, the school committee um, is present and the chairman um, offers a, an opening remark. So, How many hours uh, do I have? Uh, we're going to cut you to 1.4. <laughs> 
I, yeah, I've gone to that Brief. lunch for New Educated several times. I'd recommend if any of you can make it, it's, it's just a great opportunity. You know what, I'm sorry. I had that note in here, and thank you for raising it. Yeah, you're, you are all invited to that. Do you see that here? Yes. Oh, read it? Okay. It's a great opportunity to talk with yeah. new teachers. It is, and I know you questions. traditionally come, so yeah. I really enjoy <clears> it, <throat> you know, and then yeah. a lot of times this past year, there were a couple of North Reading right. kids who had just graduated from college. Yeah, Matt DeVecchio right, was back. And, uh, yeah, Jill Melanson yeah, yeah, joining Jill, the right, staff. Right. And uh, there was another. Oh, so you're all welcome to lunch. It's noon in the cafeteria. Right, so, and school. that's a lot of fun because it's yeah. what do you new have? people. It's, it's sandwiches. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not bad, John. Jerry, it's not bad. Uh, it's free, Jerry. Do you have any dietary uh, needs? Vegetarian? No. <laughs> not allergy? Do I look like I have any vegetarian <laughs> needs? <laughs> And then our first day of school for students in grades 1 through 12 will be on uh, Wednesday, September 7th with pre-kindergarten and kindergarten orientation on, uh, on that day and also on September 8th. And then the first day of school for the pre-kindergartner and kindergarten students would be on um, Thursday, September, excuse me, Friday, <laughs> September 9th. It, it's, it's funny. We've uh, delayed the opening of school for the last two years. And now we're still opening September 7th for the first day because of the calendar. No, it's it's interesting. The calendar yeah. crumbles. If we delayed the start of the building project, we could have. But for two years in a row, we delayed it. Yeah, we could have worked as we. Yeah, that's the project. seventh yeah. anyway. <laughs> that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right, we have some correspondence and your packets. There's three pieces of correspondence a letter from the Suburban Child and Family Resource Network on the North Reading High School Advanced Placement Score Report from Mr. Lopri and uh, updated school committee meeting schedule for 16-17. So if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman, just a couple of comments. So yeah, the, the, the AP score report, I'm assuming you saw the transcript on Thursday. Very, you know, once again, the students and um, teachers are to, and the high school staff are to be commended for another good year. I, I continue to be impressed with um, the number of students. Um, you might recall a couple of years ago, we opened up for the first time a uh, sophomore AP environmental science course and and I just think <clears throat> to have the number of students that we have participating uh, in the most rigorous courses that are offered at the high school speaks well of our students their willingness to challenge themselves and to stretch themselves and and I think the um, while I don't think we're a district that necessarily always focuses on statistics around standardized tests I do think that when we operate on under the philosophy that we're operating under with the open access um, in supporting students to, 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 to really, um, as I said, stretch themselves. It's nice to see some validation in a report like this with 71% um, with of our students receiving a qualifying score. So I think we should emphasize statistics when we do well. Yes. <laughs> now, one thing on these, so the score on the, on the physics tests has been historically low. It, it, it is. Is that the same so uh, statewide? It, it kind of is, or? and it's funny. So Mr. LaPrette and I actually took a look last week because we, we, we can't seem to get off the mark with, with where we are in physics, and there's a lot of research out there. We're, we're, we're basically running two courses. Um, it's, it's physics. Uh, it's like, don't quote me, but it's electro... Um, Electromagnetics, and there's another component to physics. I forget what it String is, quite theory. honestly. Hmm? String theory? Yeah. <laughs> so I think, I think there's going to be a push to consolidate and try running the one year, because we're finding, too, that students are not absolved of a physics requirement if they go into a science field when they go into college. So I, I think there's going to be a move to, to try and break the course out so that it's, it's one year's worth of material in one year, I think we're, I think we're we're kind of rapidly coming to the conclusion that we might be well, putting too much information. One would think, if they're taking an AP Physics class, that the content should match the right. test. Yeah. Right? Well, it does. But what, what we're essentially saying is that the two courses that you can take a test in are running over a semester each, as opposed oh, to a, over so a year. Oh, instead of right. a year. And, okay. and I think I think we're I kind of rapidly coming to the conclusion yeah, that we'd like to try something different. I see. Yeah, I'm curious to see what other districts do. Yeah. yeah, it's it's kind Physics of, might be one of those curriculums where well, no we, if you Google you do, it, you're only going to be able to achieve. There's a lot. Which we did. <laughs> we 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 Googled it last yeah. week. Just a simple Google, and yeah. it was and we found there's some differing opinions, but there's a lot of support for essentially what I kind of just outlined to you. So mm -hmm. I, I think there's, there's a, an and interest it, in and trying that. And I did note, that. 
you know, where it says down at the bottom, the physics C test was introduced in 2000. That was new. That was new. So that, that was, would, that, I would think that would impact. Yeah, right? the change came just a couple of years ago. Okay. Two testing cycles ago. Okay. So. And then the other item is um, I noticed that um, on the school committee meeting schedule I had given to you previously, there was an error that, that the town meeting is on the 17th of October. And that's because I believe there's a um, religious holiday on October 3rd. And so because of that, I, I made, I'm suggesting to you, I'm make, making the change of meeting um, on, on a Tuesday, October 11th, which would be after, that Monday is Columbus Day. Right. So I'm suggesting meeting on October 11th and then having the traditional short meeting before town meeting on the 17th. Town meeting's not until October 17th. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's really late. It's because you've got, I <clears> think, holiday you've got the, and the Jew Jewish, Jewish holiday and the third. The third. And then Columbus. there's that, Columbus right. Day. And then the Italian holiday. Right. Italian holiday. I'd up on that day, too, believe it or not. So it's up to you folks. I mean, I, you know, I'm certainly oh, be whenever you want, but if this looks okay. Yeah. yeah. Is there a uh, consensus on that? Yeah. It's fine for me. Okay. That was easy. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, future business, we have a goals workshop on August 29 at 5 o'clock in the superintendent's conference room and a 6.30 regular meeting in the distance learning lab. And I'll now entertain a motion to go into executive session and not return to open session. For the purpose of discussing, oh, uh, security. School safety and security, School safety and security. Yes. I'll make a motion to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing, discussing school safety and security and coming out of executive session with the purpose of adjourning the meeting. Second. Julie? Aye. Mel? Aye. 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 Executive session. <laughs> <laughs>